What are all these? Fermid O, Fermid K? The nutrients. What? We're gonna, we're gonna use those to make the mead? Why so complicated? Why don't you just throw in wine nutrient like we did last time? Yeah. We're going to add all of our nutrients. Just like our traditional mead, we're adding four tisps of Fermid O, two tisps of Fermid K, and one tisp of potassium carbonate. Why do mead makers stagger our nutrients? Why worry about nutrition at all? What's the point? Let's talk about that. Now you see, yeast is not a, a chemical reaction. Yeast is a fungus. It's a living, breathing organism. And in that respect, it's very similar to us as humans. There's an old saying, man cannot live by bread alone. Now, I don't think that saying has anything to do with nutrition, but it is applicable to this discussion. See, if you eat bread and nothing but bread, 100% bread diet for your entire life, you will stay alive. That bread will be enough to sustain your existence, but it won't be a very healthy existence. You won't have the proper energy levels. You won't be able to sleep properly. You won't be healthy. You'll be more susceptible to diseases. You'll be sickly all the time. So while you will stay alive, you won't get the proper nutrition for a good, healthy existence. Yeast is the same way. If you put yeast into something that contains sugar, that yeast will consume that sugar. It will ferment. But without proper nutrition, it won't be the most healthiest ferment in the world. The yeast will ferment, but they'll ferment sluggishly and sickly. You'll get lots of off flavors, lots of unwanted byproducts. You won't get the optimal fermentation that you're looking for. Now, I make mead. I make lots and lots of mead. Almost exclusively mead. I make a little beer. I make cider once in a while. I've never made wine. So I can't really speak too much on those topics. They aren't my specialty. But when it comes to mead, nutrition is very, very important. Now once again, this isn't my specialty, so if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But beer, you don't really need to worry about nutrition all that much. Most of the nutrition that the yeast need is already contained within all those grains and wheats and hops and whatever else beer makers use to make beer. A lot of their nutrition comes from their ingredients. So they typically, when you're making beer, you typically don't have to add even more nutrition. Enough nutrition for optimal fermentation is normally contained within all those ingredients. And I have never made wine, so I'm not sure what kind of nutrition goes into wine, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. So if any of you guys make wine, let me know in the comments what kind of nutrition you have to worry about when you're making wine. But when it comes to mead, nutrition is oh so important. You see, honey is very, very high in sugar. Honey is a super saturated sugar solution with approximately 17% water. Fructose is a predominant sugar at 38.5, almost 40%, followed by glucose at a little over 30%. You see, honey is almost all sugar and no nutrients. See, look at these nutrition facts. No fats, no cholesterols, no potassium, no vitamin D, nothing. It's all sugars, all carbohydrates. Now, if you mix honey and water and pitch yeast, that yeast will ferment that must, but it won't be a very good fermentation. The yeast will be sluggish, they'll be slow, you'll get off flavors. You'll probably have to age it forever before it's drinkable. You'll get that horrible jet fuel flavor. With proper nutrition, you can optimize, optimalize, that fermentation. Your fermentation will be better, much more better, more gooder, and you won't have to age it very long. Everyone knows that good wines are aged forever before they get good. The longer you age them, the better they are. 
And that's the case, or that's usually the case, with mead also. But the better your nutrition is, the less aging time you need. And with perfect nutrition, your mead will be good to go right after fermentation. Before it even clears, you're drinking it, and it's awesome. So that's why we stagger our nutrients. Now, I've used this metaphor before, but imagine if you were going on a long, long hiking trip, a 16-hour hiking trip. What do you think would be the optimal nutrition schedule for you? Eating one huge, large, nutritious meal before you leave and nothing during the duration of your hike? Or small, measured out, nutritional portions throughout the entirety of your hike? You're going to get optimal performance by staggering all your nutrition. And it's the same in a fermentation. You can front load all of your nutrients. You can't just add everything right before you pitch your yeast, mix it together and pitch. You'll get a good meat that way, but you'll probably have to age it in a long time. It'll probably have that jet fuel flavor initially, which will age away. But if you stagger those nutrients, if you add some nutrients up front, some a couple days later, and some more a few days after that, you'll get a much, much more better fermentation. Now, staggering our nutrients, staggered nutrient additions, or SNAs, are a relatively new phenomena. We haven't been doing this for very long, maybe just a couple of decades. And I'm not really sure who invented staggered nutrients. I have an idea, but if you know, let me know in the comments. But before we discovered staggering our nutrients, all nutrients were just front-loaded into the mead or the wine or whatever, you know? And it made an awesome mead like that, but it had to be aged before you could drink it. You would ferment it, sit on it for six months or a year or two years, and then you would drink it. These days, with staggered nutrient additions, you can make a mead and be drinking it right away, as soon as fermentation is over. Maybe sometimes you'll age it a little bit, just for some more better flavors. Now, there is a small fraction of people who are anti-nutrient. They say that back in the olden days, they didn't use nutrients. The Vikings didn't need nutrients. If the Vikings didn't need them, then neither do we. But the Vikings did use nutrients. Back in the olden days, they did use nutrients. They didn't understand the process. You see, they realized that if you mix honey and water, it will make mead and get you drunk, but it'll taste like ass. But then they also realized that if they added certain things to that fermentation, it would make it not taste like ass. They would add, I don't know, apples, lemon peels, thyme, cilantro, 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 cabbage, parsley, all kinds of herbs, all kinds of fruits, all kinds of grains, and these made their meat taste good. Now, they didn't realize it at the time, but what they were adding with all these additives were nutrients. We don't have to add all that stuff today because we have nutrients. We have Fermate O, Fermate K, DAP. I don't really use DAP, but we have it. They didn't have all that back then. So they got their nutrition from fruits and vegetables and herbs and spices. They didn't know that's what they were doing, but they were. But rest assured, if they had Fermato and Fermate K back in the olden days, they would have used it. I promise. You're so horribly good, Helga! So, the takeaway from all of this is that nutrition is a wonderful thing. It's important for us and it's important for yeast. Use nutrition in your brews. Use good nutrition, use proper nutrition, stagger your nutrients, and enjoy better mead faster.